and it's as bad as you think it is. <laughs> Which probably means it was time for me to give up drinking for a month. I'm almost there though. So I will not be having wine, but I really, really wish I was. That being said, let's dive in. So like I said, this past month, two separate studies uh, related to formula feeding and formula feeding parents experiences hit the medical literature, uh, which is amazing. It's a topic that's not nearly discussed as much as it should be, in my humble opinion, uh, for a variety of reasons that I'm not going to get into here, but I'm really viewing this as a bit of the tide turning. So I want to just give you a recap of these two studies and again, just hopefully convince you to share in my optimism that once things are in the medical literature, they can be addressed more appropriately scientifically. So a lot of people, you hear the buzz term evidence-based medicine or evidence-based practices or evidence-based something. It's a positive term. Well, you can't do anything unless there's evidence to base upon. So if there's no evidence or medical studies or documentation about formula feeding or formula feeding experience, et cetera, there's, <laughs> there's nothing, uh, there's nothing upon which to base policy or decision. So I'm viewing this as a positive change in our base of evidence. Enough, sci well, not enough scientific nerding. We're gonna nerd the whole time, but I'll try to be brief and hopefully again, keep it really positive. The reason I'm gonna to try to keep it really positive is the first study that I'm gonna discuss that came out in breastfeeding medicine this month is very hard to get through. I actually tried to film this happy hour twice, cried too hard both times I deleted the video. <laughs> so bear with me. Good thing I'm not drinking wine. That definitely would have pushed me over the edge. So the first study, like I said, came out this month in breastfeeding medicine. The title is Made to Feel Like Less of a Woman, The Experience of Stigma for Mothers Who Do Not Breastfeed. Oh my God. I mean, that's hard to get through just looking at it. Anyway, this study took place in the U.S. where we particularly have severe, um, ah, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a severe scenarios where stigma can occur based around feeding choices. It's not as bad everywhere else. In the U.S., we are particularly harsh. So this was uh, an in-depth survey with 250 mothers in the U.S. with infants, and the analysis was situated in the framework integrating normative influences on stigma model for stigma. Uh, that means this is a qualitative study, and I would not touch qualitative research with a 35-foot pole. I am a numbers girl. But if you are going to do qualitative research, it needs to be... Um, it needs to be based upon established models that have been proven, and this is. So it really provides the study a lot of legitimacy. And I'm just gonna read you the results. Mothers who chose not to breastfeed reported little personal or public stigma. Okay, that's amazing. In comparison, mothers who were unable to breastfeed experienced relatively more internalized stigma and perceived that other people saw them as failures. This is one. Oh, mothers who experienced more internalized and perceived sto social network stigma were likely to hide use of infant formula from others and had lower feelings of warmth for their infants. I just, I mean, I want to take a moment of silence for that. If, if probably most of the people watching are mothers, and so you know this, you've been through it, you see it happen, but to read it, formally documented, and as I said, now formally documented in the medical literature is horrifying, painful, heart-wrenching, <laughs> uh, and it just, it just breaks my heart all over again for all the women who, who go through such horrible feelings during such a beautiful time. Um, but of the last sentence I do want to leave was, I thought, very positive. Knowledge about formula use and availability of support resulted in less stigma and more warmth for the infant. So, oh, partially redeeming from such horrible things uh, to have to think about, again, during the most beautiful time in a mother's life when she has a new baby. Um, and I find it particularly encouraging because yeah, I work with families who are dealing with formula tolerance issues, so I encounter these types of emotions with mothers on a daily basis. And of course, through my website. Um, 
which is exactly what we're doing, trying to empower parents with knowledge about formula so that they don't have to feel feelings that they should never have to feel, including any kind of shame around infant feeding and the decisions that they make. So as I mentioned, that is a really hard paper to get through uh, if you wanna look it up and read the whole thing. But in general, I really am viewing it as a turning of a tide of now we have this documented. So these types of feelings, pediatricians, OBs, people like me, of course, encounter with mothers every day. But until again, it's documented with a p-value, there's no evidence upon which to base change. And so I'm really hoping that this is this is that tide turning for us. The second one is, won't be as water work. So yeah, if you're sticking with me, stay with me. Um, also came out about a week and a half ago in Maternal and Child Nutrition is the journal. And this was from an Australian group entitled Professional and Non-Professional Sources of Formula Feeding Advice for Parents in the First Six Months. It was also survey based of 270 Australian mothers with infants. Um, abstracts much longer, so I'm just gonna read you the bullet points of the results. And here's the kicker. Excuse me, one fifth, which is 20% of mothers who were formula feeding did not receive any formula advice from, from professional sources. And only a small fraction, less than 5% of mothers breastfeeding didn't receive any breastfeeding advice from professional sources. So if a mother was formula feeding, she was five times as likely to receive no advice from her medical professional, um, which was not the case. If she was breastfeeding, she was much more likely to receive advice. Now, I don't, in, this, this is my now personal interpretation. I don't interpret that as a knock on medical professionals. Um, as I talk about all the time, medical professionals, especially pediatricians, receive zero training on term infant formulas. And as you know, as a parent, formulas are changing and new things are coming out so quickly, even if, they were able to attend a seminar or seek out extra training in medical school, it would likely be obsolete by the time they're practicing uh, in a private practice. So this is not a knock on pediatricians, but it is a call to action to the medical community. And that was their, their conclusion that um, further research is needed to understand, and I'm reading now, specific barriers to accessing formula feeding advice. And they give a call to action to, of course, end that dichotomy, no matter how you choose to feed your infant, formula feeding, breastfeeding, or any mix, you should, you should have access to professional medically informed uh, support and advice. So highlighting that that is not the case and not occurring, again, shines a spotlight now in a formal way that's been published in the medical literature, um, which has to happen before change can occur. It starts with just stories, it starts with people saying this stuff and then someone does a study so that we can officially document that it's happening and then change can occur. So I'm just feeling really positive this weekend to see these two come out at the same time. Uh, I don't think that's a coincidence. I really am hoping this is a small snowball starting to roll to be able to provide more evidence-based support for medical professionals who help mothers and infants in the feeding process. So I'm feeling really great about it. Um, and I'll just end by saying, if you're one of those moms who related to that first study, um, I'm with you. We're all with you. My heart goes out to you. Such Horrible negative feelings such as shame or guilt have no place anywhere near your interaction and your relationship with your infant. Your baby is fed, your baby is loved, you are doing an amazing job. So take all that stress off of you and use that energy to focus on snuggles, on cooing, on tickling, on all the wonderful things that your baby and you do together. And that's what makes parenthood so amazing. So thank you so much, you guys. I'll be back whenever I can find the time. <laughs> Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. The next time I see you, it will be in February and I will for sure have a glass of wine. So join me then. <laughs> you guys rock. See you later.